Joining me now to discuss, Shan Wu, defense attorney and former federal prosecutor, and Ron Brown, senior senior editor for The Atlantic, as well as CNN senior political analyst. So, so Shan, first, uh, you know, a lot of cases to go through here. Let, let's go on the McGahn case now. Uh, this is key. DOJ, as expected, is going to appeal. Not clear yet, I believe, whether they're going to ask for a stay, but, but right. probable they're going to ask for a stay here. Uh, what is likely to happen next? Yeah, that's exactly right. I, I think it is key whether they'll ask for a stay or not. Uh, it makes sense they would ask for the stay. So really what happens next, Jim, is it's going to, they're going to lose on this argument of absolute immunity. I mean, that's been widely expected. Uh, as Caitlin was, re was reporting, even in the Myers case, Judge Bates there had basically rejected this blanket assertion. It's going to end up with McGahn in a witness chair, but then it's still going to go question by question. So he may try a little bit more absolute immunity, or rather the White House may try some more on some questions, and then they'll revert to executive privilege. So it's a long way to go in terms of litigation. But I think importantly, this legal ruling is a big help for the Democrats' obstruction argument. Okay. But, Ron, as you know, this is all about timing here, because part of the White House strategy, right. as I was discussing with Caitlin, is just you know, push these witnesses out so that they can't be a factor in the impeachment yes. inquiry and on that note particularly because the democrats and we, we you know they've got a piece of this as well right because they they have a very aggressive timeline they have said they're not going to fight it out in the courts on that point regardless of how the courts decide haven't hasn't the trump administration effectively won on keeping these witnesses out of the impeachment inquiry they have uh, no question mm -hmm. and you know like many things in american life i mean this is ultimately going to be decided by john roberts you know how john roberts mm -hmm. feels the morning that uh... Uh, it comes to him because uh, the pattern of decisions on a wide variety of issues is that the four, Repo other, four other Republican appointed justices are going to give the administration a lot of leeway. I mean, their, their, their posture has been deference, uh, much like the Republicans in Congress, uh, toward what the Trump administration wants. I do think there is the potential that this could be relevant for the 2020 election more than for impeachment. Uh, you know, uh, if you look at the tax case, uh, it is, it, it, if the court takes it, you know, they could delay it all the way till next June. But ultimately, if they decide, if they conclude that he must release the uh, the tax returns, that will be available uh, to to Congress at that point. Potentially the same thing with his testimony, but it is not on a track to influence whether or not the House votes to impeach. And on something like that, the CNN poll this morning showing you know uh, support remaining at about half the country is probably more relevant. Okay, Shan, let's go to the other case, which is about the president's taxes. The uh, Supreme Court has granted a stay, in effect, says it's going de to decide on this, um, or at least asking both sides to present arguments as to why it should decide and decide quickly. Uh, where do you see this going? Where do you see the court mm -hmm. leaning on this issue? And wh where is the legal precedent on whether Congress should have access? Because, I mean, you read the law, it, it says uh, the House Oversight shall. Committee shall right. have the right to do so. I mean, is, Shan, is the law clear? Uh, well, there's not really legal precedent on the president's taxes being released. Uh, it's been my view. Uh, I'm still going to stick with it. I I'm not sure the Supreme Court's going to take it. Uh, I they're asking for both sides to give their best reasons for why they need to take it and take it fast. But ultimately, I I'm not sure which way they're going to come out on it because it it's a little st a step removed from him. It's not he's being personally subpoenaed to produce these. It does go into the question of whether his uh, so-called immunity from process, meaning you can't charge him or indict him while he's in office, goes to this question of whether a third party can get his taxes or even whether the fact that they're being subpoenaed automatically means he's being pulled into a criminal process. So, so there's a lot of stuff to kind of slice and dice there, and I don't know that they're going to want to jump into what we're thinking of as the basic question of must the president release his taxes. There's a lot of nuances that they can cut away at on that. You know, you know, Ron, as, as you know, uh, John Roberts is, is uh, very protective of the Supreme yes. Court's uh, position to the extent it still exists today a as a nonpartisan body here. There can be a lot of tests to that, will yes. there not, in the next seven to, and, to eight months. And, and as Shan was talking, that's what I was thinking. I mean, really, in many ways, the controlling dynamic here may be John Roberts' desire, how far does John Roberts' desire to have the court not be seen as a partisan institution extend? You know, he, he broke from the other conservatives on the census case when the administration was trying to change the rules in the Senate says in a way that would likely reduce the count of uh, non-white Americans. Uh, he, on the other hand, you know, they backed the Muslim ban, and it looks like they're going to support the administration uh, ending DACA. I, if they don't take the case, you, you know, we, we will probably learn that ultimately it, it was Roberts' 
this desire not to be seen as reflexively protecting the president that, that, that controls okay, Ron it. Ron Brownstein, hold your thought. Hold your thought, Ron, because we have some breaking news.